What is a lucid dream? To put it simply, a lucid dream is when you realize that you're dreaming. And from there, it's up to your imagination to what happens. Unfortunately, lucid dreams are pretty rare, but after sharing my tips on how to induce a lucid dream, I'm pretty confident that you'll be able to get your first lucid dream and many more. As of the conception of this script, I've had 61 lucid dreams that I've written about, but I think the one that will help us the most is my first lucid dream ever. So in my senior year of high school, I got pretty obsessed with dreams in general. I had a dream buddy that I exchanged dream stories with, and this eventually led to our discovery of the possibility of lucid dreaming. We got really excited and tried our best to get our first lucid dream. Luckily, I did. My first lucid dream ever, and I got it by saying lucid in my head 100 times before sleeping. Either that or I would fall asleep first. It took a couple of weeks of me wanting it and doing that before I got it, but eventually it happened and here's how it went down. I was walking around a big savers market with my best friend, just browsing the food aisles. We left the market and I walked out with no pants. I asked my friend, dude, where'd my pants go? I think you left it in the store, he said. I looked at him with disbelief. And right then and there, I realized it was a dream. I imagined my pants on my legs and they reappeared. And for some reason, my next instinct was to do a whole bunch of flips in the parking lot in front of a crowd. And for my last move, I started flying. It was a very weird type of flight, one where my body was horizontal, but instead of moving forward, I kept moving up. As I rose higher and higher, I could see all the buildings and roads clearer until I woke up. It was a fun dream, but I lacked control and I didn't stay lucid for very long. So I'd say the three biggest factors in helping me get these lucid dreams were number one, the extremely strong desire to have a lucid dream. Number two, the fact that I kept thinking about it each night before sleeping. And also I put up these glowing stickers, glow in the dark stickers that spelled out lucid. Um, so I would always see the word and it helped me remind myself to want to have a lucid dream that night. Then three, the fact that I had a friend that I could tell my dreams to acted as a substitute dream journal because at the time I hadn't started a dream journal quite yet. So if you had only these three things, I'm confident that you'll eventually get a lucid dream. However, you really, really have to have them. So you can sort of think of it as a feedback loop. Each tip helps the other tip. For instance, if you talk about your dreams with your friend, it'll nurture your interest in wanting to have a lucid dream. And then wanting to have a lucid dream will help push you to remember to have a lucid dream each night. You don't need any fancy methods or dream pills to get your first lucid dream. And just to give some attention to other minor factors, number one, I usually slept around 10 to 11 p.m. that year, and I had to wake up around 6.30 a.m. for school. Number two, I got good grades and didn't feel too much stress. Um, in fact, I was feeling a bit of senioritis that year and I didn't really want to go to school or really care for it. So that was where I'd put my general mood. Number three, I was generally in good health. I exercised pretty often. I was usually in a positive headspace and I didn't eat a lot of junk food or anything like that. So I call these minor factors because they don't matter as much as the major factors. It certainly helps if you are in good health, have a good sleep schedule and aren't stressed out all the time. But I've had lucid dreams on nights where I did feel stressed out, didn't sleep on time and you know, kind of just the three minor things, I broke them. So that means they aren't as important as the major ones. Regardless, it's better to be safe about it and Honestly, you should probably try to have these three things anyways. I'd, I'd probably say the most important minor one is to have a good sleep schedule so that you can more easily remember your dreams because that's pretty important. If you have a lucid dream and can't remember it, kind of sucks. All right, so now that I've explained my tips to you guys, I'm actually gonna go ahead and try a challenge. Can I get a lucid dream within one month? Now, before I actually start the challenge, just for fun, I'm gonna show you guys on the screen, my record for lucid dreams over the years. Not sure why 2014 had so little. Um, things that were different that year was one, I started journaling, and two, it was my second semester of my first year of college. So that was kind of a new experience. For 2020, I felt like my head just wasn't in the game. So for 2021, I'm gonna do my best to try and change that. Let's go ahead and do this. 
Today is Monday, February 22nd. So what I wanted to try is a video idea for my dream journal, which I've been keeping for about seven years now. It's not always consistent. Sometimes I miss a few days. Sometimes I actually miss like an entire month, but I have been doing my best to keep up with that dream journal this year. And one of the things I was actually worried about was having a lucid dream in between the time I thought of this video and the time that I decided to record like my initial thoughts and initial plan. And then guess what happened? I had a unique experience. One, it was a lucid dream last night, but the unique part was I had two lucid dreams. I woke up after the lucid dream and then I went back to sleep and I had another lucid dream. That's never ever happened before, which is hilarious because it just so happens to be like when I don't want it, you know? Um, like I, I just was hoping that it would happen after I recorded this. But I thought that was a fun experience to have this coincidence. Um, honestly, this might be the only night that I have a lucid dream because sometimes even when I want it, it doesn't come until like a month or two later. Um, so let's just see what happens. For now, this, this was just an initial video to state the challenge, which is going to be how many lucid dreams can I have before I make the video, basically. Um, before I write the script of the video, pretty much, because at the point that I write the script, um, I mean, I can always add more to it, but I, I, I don't think I will, like, overhaul the script or anything just because I had, like, one or two extra lucid dreams. Maybe even zero. Let's, let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and try to get another lucid dream. But first, let me describe what happened in that lucid dream. Did you want to say something, Scott? The teacher asked me. I was standing in the middle of a classroom with everyone looking at me. I looked at the teacher and kept thinking about how I couldn't recognize who she was. Then it snapped. She's no teacher of mine, I thought. I started walking into the classroom door and told the rest of the students, this is a dream. If you want to see something cool, come outside. I walked out with nearly the entire classroom following. I felt extremely confident that it was a dream and was ready to test it out by flying. However, I decided to do something interesting. I asked the others to fly with me and with no signal, a dozen of us took off flying into the town. I landed on the roof and remembered I wanted to try something. Holding my hands out, I formed an orb that looked like it had a storm inside of it. It took an enormous amount of focus to do it, but I managed to pull out a sharp blade, which is a big mystical sword. I accomplished my goal, felt tired, and then I woke up. The cool thing is, since I journal, I can actually tell you what I did during the day before the lucid dream. Here's a look at my journal entry. It looks like I had a brainstorming session in the morning with my team on my other YouTube channel, practiced piano, and had a good calisthenics training session. I also listened to the end of Stormlight Archive Book 2 again, and played a little Borderlands 3 with my friends. And lastly, I slept at a good time, which was 10.30 p.m. You can definitely see how my dreams were influenced by what I did during the day, especially the stormlight aspect. So interestingly, after I woke up and fell back asleep, I had another lucid dream that night, which is the first time that's ever happened to me. This time, I sort of just talked to two strangers and realized it was a dream. Sometimes it just happens. I mean, one of the big indicators was one of the strangers who was a girl, her face just kept changing. So that 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 was also a huge indicator. Um, this time I wasn't able to do anything cool. I tried to do the same thing, like pull a sword out of the orb, uh, shard blade, but that didn't quite happen. All right, so we technically beat the challenge before it even started, but because I didn't declare it beforehand, I decided to try for another one. And luckily I got a lucid dream on March 4th. Here's how it went down. I was traveling in a castle with my two friends, Roger and Matthew. We were geared up like knights in Dark Souls. There was a fourth member of our group who was invisible, but I could clearly see his footprints on the dusty floor. I heard a distant whisper of an inhuman creature. Something was chasing us. We quickened our pace to find the exit of the castle, but we were stuck. Broken pieces of stone from a pillar blocked our path. With pure willpower, I managed to get it out of the way telepathically. Then I waved my hands and a platform lowered for us. Once the platform reached the top, we found ourselves in an area that looked like a parking lot at night. Oddly though, the sky was fake. 
It was a ceiling that was about three stories high, and this is when I realized it was a dream. There were some kids playing with a ball, and it seems my first instinct after becoming lucid was to show off to these kids that I could jump super high and touch the ceiling. Afterwards, what I did was float next to the ceiling, unable to fly any higher, and I asked myself, what do I want to rename my team YouTube channel? Unfortunately, my dream didn't give me a response. And for what I did during the day, the things that stood out were, I caught up with a friend I hadn't caught up with in a while. I vacuumed and mopped in silence, just thinking a lot. I got the COVID vaccine the previous day, so my arm was too sore to do my normal calisthenics exercises. Four, I watched a little Death Note and edited a Promised Neverland video. Okay, and with that, the challenge is complete, and I'm very happy about that because I hadn't had a lucid dream this year at all until I started the challenge. Luckily, I had another lucid dream, which was on March 14th, which brings me to three lucid dreams within one month. This one was kind of boring, so I'm gonna spare you the details. And just to note, while I was scripting this video in April, I had another two lucid dreams on April 18th and also April 20th. So that's five lucid dreams in the total of two months. So I'd say overall, this challenge was very successful in sort of bringing that spark back and that interest and desire of having lucid dreams. And just to reiterate some tips, because honestly, for the challenges, all I did was have a really strong desire to have lucid dreams. Some nights I didn't, I wasn't even like thinking about it that much because it's been pretty busy. Uh, so the challenge, you know, after you do it once, that was, that was it. I technically won the challenge, so after that I didn't think about it, but because all of those thoughts came back and this, and me writing the script and everything, it was on my mind. So those two things, that's all that it took. One, a strong desire, and two, the fact that I was thinking about it, like days where I was writing the script. And of course, if you guys have tips that I didn't mention, feel free to write them in the comments. I'd definitely like to know what triggers your lucid dreams. Hopefully it can help others out there that are also viewing the video. I think dreams are one of the most interesting things out there, and I kind of don't understand why some people think it's boring to talk about. So feel free to leave a comment about your first lucid dream experience. Also, with that said, this is not the end of the topic. Remember how I asked certain questions in my lucid dream and also summoned a shard blade? Well, those are things that you can obtain with more lucid control, which is gonna be the topic of my next video. Of course, you're gonna need to get into the habit of getting lucid dreams first, so best of luck. In the meantime, check out my video about how I structure my journal. It's not a dream journal, but I think it's a great first step in trying to gain better memory recall. Once you're ready to try your hand at greater lucid control, I'll see you in part two.